Hello everybody. So it's Mrs. Eccles and I'm going to be working with you on 6.NS.2. Remember that the 6 refers to um, our grade level which is 6th grade. This is for number systems and this is the second standard in the um, common core standards. And it's going to be on dividing multi-digit numbers. So we're going to do a couple examples. Um, the first thing is making sure that you understand what the values are. So remember that we're taking notes when we're watching my videos and um, writing down the examples. If you'd ever like to pause before I start doing the answer to see if you can do it on your own, that's always suggested. And then you can come back to it and see how I did it and make sure you did it right. All right. So right now we have 923 divided by 71. And I want to just label some things here. So write this down. This first number is called our dividend. And this second number is called our divisor. And I hope that you know by now that the answer to it is our quotient. Sorry, my handwriting is atrocious. All right. So that's just the basics. So now we're going to set up the problem. And the way that I try to make sure that you understand what order to put them in um, is the first guy in line gets to go in the bathroom first. And the second guy in line is staying outside the door waiting. Okay, so the first guy in line gets to go inside the bathroom, and the second guy in line is going to stand outside and wait for their turn. Okay, um, it's very important that you understand what the order is because at some point it's not going to be obvious. When, as we go along with math, it's not always going to be the big numbers inside the box. That's not how it's going to always be anymore. So please make sure you understand that the first guy in line gets in the bathroom and the second guy in line is outside the door waiting. Okay, whatever will help you to remember, that's just my little trick for you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start dividing 71 into 923. And the thing that we need to think about is you probably don't know your multiples of 71. So, um, weird, me either. Me, me either. So what we need to do is figure out our multiples of 71. You don't have to write them all out, and you certainly don't have to do this method. This is just one method that um, is super popular. It's called doubles. So we know that 1 times 71 is going to be 71. And 2 times 71 is just when we double it, and so that would end up being 142. We can add 71 plus 71, or we can do 71 times 2. If at that point we just continue to double our numbers, we can say 4 times 71 is 284, and that 6 times um, 27, or sorry, sorry, let me go back. I would actually skip over to 8 times 71 and then double that number. So now we're thinking of 284 plus 284, and that's not as easy of a math problem. So. 568. I had to do my little math up here. So it's important that you maybe have some of those guidelines to go by whenever we start into our math problem, just so that we know some of the multiples right off the bat. So when we're looking at 71 going into 9, I know that that's not going to work. If you'd like to put a zero up there, that's never a bad idea to make sure that you move over because now we're going to be looking at 92. Now, I will say that some people like to um, do the zero here and then say zero and carry the nine down and then drop down the two, and that's completely fine as well. Um, it's a shortcut that if you're not going to multiply anything into it that you just move over to the 92, but it's not necessary. We can also do the zero and drop down the two. Either way, now we're going to talk about 71 into 92. So if we look over here, we've got 71, and then we go up to 142, when we go up one more number. So obviously, we're going to try 1. When we do 1 times 71, you get 71. I'll try and stay inside my boxes here. And you get a remainder of 21. Remember that as long as this remainder is not bigger than this number, we went high enough. If that number is bigger than 71, it means we needed to go one more time and we need to do some erasing, which is why we use pencil. All right, so now we've got 71 into 213 because we need to drop down our 3. So 213, if I look, I've got 142, and then if I go up to 4 times 71, I've got 284. 284 is too high, 
And kind of looking at it, I, I'm wondering if 242 is too small. Um, so I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to do times three because I've got times two and times four. And neither one of those are, are really close to it. So I'm going to do times three. So three times one, and the way we do this is just three times one is three. And then three times seven is 21. You can also do your math off to the side if you'd like to do it like this and then put your answer there, whichever is fine. Um, either way, we find out that we get a remainder of zero because we just subtract and we get a remainder of zero. We have no more numbers to bring down, so we are done. And our answer is 13. At this point, guys, please remember to drop off the zero and make your answer just 13. All right, so here's our next example, and it's going to get a little more um, difficult. We're going to do 81 divided by 30. And so again, you can think of your multiples of 30. This, times I think, this time, I think multiples of 30 are kind of easy because we've got 30 and 60. It's really multiples of 3 with a 0 added on. And so that's not too bad, right? So um, I just did a couple here. This is times 1, times 2, times 3, and times 4. If I need more, I can add to my little multiplication list here. But I'm going to go 30 goes into 8, 0 times. Again, you can do 0 times 30 is 0, subtract, bring down the 1, and now you have 81. Or you can just say, okay, I'm going to skip over and do the 1 now, and that makes 81. So 30 goes into 81. When we look over here at our list, we've got, you know, these numbers. 3 would be 90. 90 is too high, so that's not going to work. 2 would be 60. I know it's not where it needs to be, but we can't go higher to 3 because that's too high. So we're going to use 2. I'm going to say 2 times 30 is 60. And we get a remainder of 21. Now, we're no longer working with remainders, guys, and we've run out of numbers. So we're going to be learning something new here. We're going to be learning to add, it's called annexing our 0. We're going to annex the 0 and add a 0 to the end because 81.0 is the same as 81. I haven't changed the value there. Now, if I'm adding a 0 inside the dividend, I need to shoot it right up into my quotient and make it 2 point, okay? So now I can take that lovely zero that I added and drop it down. And I need to think this 30 go into 210. Well, I didn't go that high, so let me go ahead and, and keep going with my multiples of 3 and add zeros to it. Because if I'm doing 30, I can do multiples of 3 and add zeros because that's the power of 10 that we've talked about. So um, when I get to... 7 times 30, I get to 210, and that's exactly what I needed. So I'm going to do 210 here, and when I subtract, I get a zero remainder. So that means that my answer is 2.7. We're no longer doing remainders. Sometimes, I, at some point, I'll also show you fractions, but um, that right now, what we're doing are decimals. All right, 2.7 is the answer then. Now our next example, 11 divided into 73. Again, um, you might know your multiples of 11 because those ones are part of the multiple family facts that we've learned before, um, but they might not be super solid, so you're welcome to write them along the side. Um, this would be another one where you could do your doubling, um, you know, and stop there. This is times one, this is times two, then four, and then eight. Um, because I'm doubling my 1 to 2, then 2 to 4, and then 4 to 8. I'm just doubling my numbers as I go. And it's just a good guideline. Now when I look at 11 and 73, I know that I'm not going to use 4 because that's too small and 8 is too big. Um, so I need to find a number that's somewhere in between those. So I might start with 5 and say, okay, 5 times 11 is 55. So that's not high enough, I don't think. 6 times... 11 is 66. That looks pretty good. 7 times 11 would be 77, and that's just too high. So we're going to go ahead and use 6. And 6 times 11 is 66. If you knew your multiples of 11, you see how that would be a lot easier not to have to list all of these numbers. We just don't always get that lucky. All right, so when we subtract, we get 7 as our remainder. We are not done because I told you that we're not doing remainders anymore. We're big kids now. So I'm going to add a decimal and a zero. Don't forget to shoot that decimal straight up. 
and I'm going to drop that zero down so that I now have 70. So I need to think how many times is 11 go into 70? Well, I worked on it right here, and it was 66. So I'm going to put 6. 6 times 11 is 66. And I subtract, and when I do 70 minus 66, it's 4. Now I'm going to have to add another 0 and drop it down. How many times does 11 go into 40? Okay, well that's over here. 44 would be too much. If you know your multiples, it would be 3. 3 times 11 is 33. Subtract, and I'm going to get 7. Uh-oh, I'm just running out of room, aren't I? Add a 0, drop it down. If you notice something, I just started back over to where I was right here. I know that it's going to have to go 6 times, and that's 66. I get a remainder of 4, and look, I'm right back here. Add a 0, and then I'm going to do 3, and then I'm going to do, and I'm going to keep getting remainders of 7, and then 4, and then 7, and then 4. So this 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, 3 is going to go on forever and ever and ever. So the way that we write that is 6.63, and we draw a line over the 6.3 because that's what's repeating. 6.3, 6.3, 6.3, 6.3. All right, so that one was a more difficult one, and this is what we call a repeating decimal. Now, with that in mind, I want to look back at this last one that we did just before where it was a remainder of, um, I'm sorry, a uh, 2.7, and we got the zero remainder that we've always wanted. This is called a terminating decimal, meaning that, yes, we did have to start using decimals, but it's a terminating decimal because it gets that zero remainder that we've always been wanting. And that's what we're always looking for. All right, guys, so that ends our lesson on dividing uh, multi-digit numbers. I've got several other videos in my YouTube um, under four point, or sorry, six point NS point two. So if you'd like to watch any more videos, please feel free to look at them. All right, guys, you have a wonderful day. I'll see you in school. Bye.